Hey, it's Joe Pags. Join me live today at 5. Now back to the Voice of Reason with Andy Hoosier on the Big Talker, AM 1480 and 102.5 FM, KQAM. It's time for Truth. Defending the rights of every Kansan. This is the Voice of Reason with Andy Hoosier. Well, good morning to you. Welcome back into the Voice of Reason, hour number three. The Voice of Reason right here on the Big Talker, 1480 on the AM side, 102.5 on the FM side, KQAM. It's great to have you along. It's great to be with you as we're kicking it on a Thursday morning. St. Patrick's Day Eve. Yes, I know we're excited about that. The green shall commence very, very soon. And I'm kind of excited. Seven minutes past the hour, 40 degrees here in Wichita, Kansas. Your thoughts and calls are always appreciated. 721-8255. 721-TALK. If you'd like to join into the program, I'd love to hear from you. You can shoot me a message as well on the Facebook, on the Voice of Reason Facebook page, on the KQAM Facebook page. Also, if you're watching, you can go on to Facebook.com, go to the KQAM page. You can see the Facebook Live feed happening to where you can see us in studio. Yes, I do have the dual screen going on today as our next guest in studio with us, Mr. John Todd of the Pachyderm Club. How are you, my friend? Excellent. Well, I've had you on the show I remember I, it was like right when I started about a year, year and a half ago, had you on the midday show. Uh, but since then, I haven't had you on. How, you've, how have you been? The Pachyderm Club, i got to say, you guys bring some pretty fun guests in there. We have a lot of fun with it. Uh, it's, you know, it's open to the public. Uh, we welcome people to come. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. We're, so on, we're this, on Facebook. And also. on Facebook as well, yeah. Yeah, I followed you guys on Facebook. And uh, you have a lot of the pictures. You have a lot of the audio sometimes from some of the guests. Uh, it's, and uh, uh, each week I see you guys promote uh, who you're coming in there. So every Friday at noon. And uh, people can go in there, open the public there, be able to have a nice little lunch and be able to listen to some great speakers. I love it. John, I, I previewed and I kind of teased it and set the platform that last half hour about this issue, the Senate Bill 31. In your perspective, did I, how did I set that up? In, in your eyes, what do you see? What does this bill do? And what's really going on here in our, in our community and in the state of Kansas? Well, it gives uh, cities, local, local cities additional powers that they, they really don't need. And when you really look at the, before you start and, and on the path of giving cities additional powers, let's look at what they've been doing with what with the current law. And so my 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 position is they don't need additional uh, power to exercise eminent domain. They don't need to be redefining abandoned property. Uh, they they have essentially been confiscating, seizing, and destroying private. Private abiding citizens' private destroying abiding citizens' private property without compensation, with adequate notice, and a legal property title. It's, it really has lacked due process of law. How can they do that? How can, I mean, how do they have the right to say, well, you know, it's abandoned. Uh, the owner may or may not want it anymore, so we're just going to consume and take it over, and then we're going to do what we will with it. Well, that's that's a good question, and I think perhaps that's maybe one of the reasons why there's an attempt on the part of. Uh, uh, cities, the uh, League of Kansas Municipalities, to to try to uh, uh, and rightly so maybe do some do some things to uh, to clear up blight. But they there there's been little attempt to uh, look at at uh, the private property rights of the people that they're that are impacted by this. Sure. <clears throat> when you look at the uh, map, this you know my my interest in, or my focus has been the city of Wichita. Sure. But when you look at the uh, map here. Uh, this is an area of town bounded by 14, 14th Street on the north, Murdoch on the south, Hillside on the east, and I-135. Green rectangles. There are dozens and dozens of houses that had, in my opinion, had economic life that were just simply bulldozed and with no compensation whatsoever to any of the owners. Uh, this is wrong. And... Uh, and I always like to look, I look at real estate a lot more as an opportunity. Uh, so, so many of these houses had to represent uh, a, an opportunity to, for someone to buy the property or the owner can use a 203K FHA loan, a residential rehabilitation loan, mm-hmm. to re- rehab the properties. They can hire someone to do it. Uh, and and what <clears throat> instead of bulldozing houses, 
uh, what we're doing is we're creating uh, affordable, low-cost, uh, entry-level houses, and they're actually incubator houses, so it's a starter house. Sure. Sure, ex- exactly. So, so you take it instead of a, a house that's structured. Now, if it's not structurally sound, there's a lot. There's not a point to keep it, but you would still want to compensate the private owner of it to say, "Hey, we're going to pay you for the use of the land or the value of the land, and then we'll do what we will with it." But if it's structurally sound, if the foundation's okay, if the structure's okay, it just needs some fine tuning. It needs some paint. It needs a little bit of a, you know a little bit of love in there. Then that is a perfect starter home that a, that a young couple, that an individual coming in trying to start a new life, is a great potential mm-hmm. for them because they usually can't afford a brand new spanking new house. Uh, and we can not only will it do that, but that would raise the value of all the properties around it as well, would it not? No question about it. Uh, and a lot of times, if there's weeds and things around, it looks bad. But structurally, from a structural standpoint, the foundation, the stem walls are, are straight. Uh, the Standard ceiling heights. The ceilings are not. Uh, the the roof is not bagging. Uh, structurally, you know, the the building's fine. And these houses, uh, I know of a house that uh, in in this neighborhood I was talking about that a young couple purchased for nineteen hundred dollars. They told me that they they spent mostly their own labor. They spent about sixteen thousand dollars rehabilitation costs. And they're going to move their family into a, 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 an affordable, nice, low-cost house mm-hmm. uh, that normally would have been bulldozed by our city. Uh, sure. This is an outrage, basically, the bulldozing. I don't understand how to – now, it, if they're bulldozing it, let's talk about this area that uh, where they've been doing this. What are they using the land for? If they're bulldozing the home, if they're seizing the property, seizing the land, they bulldoze the property, what are they using it for? Well, here's here's kind of the process. Uh, the bo- Board of Code and Building Standards uh, makes the recommendation to the City Council uh, to, uh, to 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 demolish the house. City Council then uh, votes on it, and when they and when they vote on it, then they they hire uh, someone to demolish the house, and the cost is around eight to ten thousand dollars. What I'm, I'm what I'm told. Okay, and. They don't have title to the property. They d- demolish the house, and then they charge back the eight to ten thousand against the property that the owner, the original owner, still owns. And the uh, and and so now they own a vacant lot that they owe eight to ten thousand on. Sure. And so it, it's this this is a taking of property. Mm-hmm. This is a, a form of eminent domain, in my opinion. Oh, it really is. It, it really is. I mean, if they're if the owner's not being compensated for it, even if they don't want the property, they deserve. Whatever compensation then, then, to, for then to the go value. On, go on and answer your question. Uh, what happens basically? Uh, the house it becomes a vacant lot. Uh, you can look at that map, and there there are just dozens and dozens of those vacant lots uh, all over. Uh, and they they draw trash. They grow weeds. Uh, they they go back for taxes within about three or four years, and they and they. It's really unusual to see one sell for more than five hundred dollars. Most of them are hundred dollars or less. Sure. And so once they get sold for taxes, basically the property owners wind up with Zippo zero. So, <laughs> so the these houses, if we do end up saving them, if we try and uh, you know give them, invest some money mm-hmm. into them, we allow an individual to, to you know buy the house for what was the example you gave like twelve hundred dollars for the house? They put in a few thousand dollars worth right. of renovations into it. I mean, how much does that raise the value of it? How much do these houses get turned around for later down the road if they end up wanting to sell them? How could how much could they go for? Well, I, in my opinion, that that house that they have twenty thousand in is probably worth thirty thirty five thousand. Uh, they could. It, it, an entrepreneur, an enterprising young remodeling contractor or entrepreneur could buy that or or do the same thing that they're doing and turn around and sell it for thirty thirty five thousand mm-hmm. and there's a nice profit to be made exactly and and rather than turning it over to a nonprofit the way the senate bill thirty one uh that you know we've we've got people now that uh, that are paying taxes. We're fire police, all of those kind of things, basically. Sure. And and we've got a property back on the tax roll. I was doing some. Uh, I was working with with a friend of mine uh, at one of the uh, banks yesterday. And on a uh, uh, based on a thirty five thousand dollar house, similar. There's one. There's a house over on North Grove that right now is vacant and is it, it it's subject to being bulldozed. It. Uh, 
Yeah, I think it's worth re- rehabilitate. I think it's worth at least thirty-five thousand, and the payments on that uh, were amazingly low. Two hundred seventy-eight dollars. Really, principal, principal interest tax insurance. That's affordable housing. That's affordable housing there. And we have some government housing in the area that that uh, uh, works with uh, Section Eight uh, subsidized rent. So someone that makes a thousand dollars a month, they can they can get into those units for three hundred dollars, and the federal government makes up the difference. Mm-hmm. So here's an opportunity that instead of having someone in a in government housing and wind up in 30 years with a handful of Section 8 rent receipts and own nothing, <laughs> right? here's an opportunity for entry-level houses where people wind up owning something. And, and owning owning a free and clear house uh, is one of the finest things you can do as far as uh, setting yourself up for ever thinking about retirement. So this really comes down to the fact of not to, not just teaching someone a trait on how to invest and how to do the handyman work, how to get mm-hmm. it up, but as you mentioned, this is the difference between if we're going to talk about conservatism with uh, to, with being able to own property and walking away with a profit, looking farther down the road, having as it coming out with more than what you went into with it here, rather than being dependent on government housing and government programs to try and sustain you here. Or as you said, you walk away with the rent receipts. Oh, hey, great! I just spent the last two years, three years in government housing, I paid the rent, everything's all hunky-dory, now I walked away, I don't have anything, as opposed to, I just bought a house for $1,500, I sunk $15,000 into it there, that's $20,000, I walked away with $35,000 home, I just made a profit of fifteen grand, and I can reinvest that, and I learn uh, the, the betterment of finances and how to move up the, the move up the chain here. And when you do this, uh, what happens, basically, you create jobs, uh, you expand the tax base, and you do tremendous neighborhood uplift. And that's exactly what uh, the, the neighborhood I was talking about needs, mm-hmm. uplift. And you don't do it by continuing to tear people's houses down and paying them nothing. I mean, this this gets old after a bit. Uh, you know, pe- people understand. Sure. And they feel helpless. And uh, it, it, the whole process, like the governor said, is really wrong. Absolutely. Uh, John Todd, I want to keep you in here for another segment. Uh, your thoughts and calls as well. If you have any questions, 721-8255, 721-TALK. Let's take a break here. When we come back, we'll continue this. How can we stop it? What does this bill say? And what can we do to try and modify it a little bit and protect your right to private property? Kind of an important issue, is it not? 721-8255, 721-TALK. This is The Voice of Reason right here on KQAM. Welcome back into the Voice of Reason right here on the Big Talker KQAM 24 minutes past the hour. Another segment here with John Todd of the Pachyderm Club talking about Senate Bill number 31, private property, seizures of the government taking away your land uh, without any payments, doing what they will with it, instead of rehabilitating. What can we do to stop that from happening? What can we do to protect our private property and give others opportunities to be able to raise the value of those properties, raise the value of the homes, raise the equity, and, by the way, learn a trade while investing into the economy here. Let's go to the phones here, uh, 721-8255-721. Talk. Good morning. What's your name? Good morning, sir. This is Drew. Drew, how are you, sir? I'm doing great. Uh, Mr. Todd, this is a, a problem not just isolated to Wichita. And, and one of the things that, from what you were saying this morning that it strikes me is that I know that the city – We'll uh, we'll go ahead and, and and play favoritism, and that they'll give certain builders and certain developers, um, you know, breaks in 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 the construction of homes and and of different kinds out in in preferred areas where they're going to get much higher tax revenues off of them. We've seen for decades now where the areas you were just talking about, where they they have been trying to. To, to redevelop those areas, it occurs to me that if they really were serious, some of these breaks that they'd be giving to build one or two homes out in the high-dollar areas, maybe they should be putting them into those areas you were just talking about instead of bulldozing the homes. Let's go ahead and start rebuilding community. I think you make a good point. Uh, I, I think that uh, as it relates to this bill, one of the things uh, my concern is, is – uh, Property seizure without compensation. Uh, they're seizing property without first obtaining legal title. Uh, they're uh, and and they're 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 favoring only non nonprofit organizations. 
a I've been I sent a letter to uh, 39 of our 40 senators. I won't tell you who I didn't send it to, but the uh, <laughs> uh, asking uh, that they that they amend. See this 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 bill is is uh, in the Senate, uh, and uh, we're hoping to uh, to offer an amendment that offers some private pri- pri- protection to the private property owners. And Senator Pilser Cook responded, and she is ta- she is in the process of working on an amendment that would mandate some sort of some type of auction that would be similar to the foreclosures for on on, uh, on mortgages. And what I like about that, uh, uh, there the the court basically would would uh, go through the process of determining who the owners are, uh, do all the due process, serve the notices and whatnot. Uh, it would be done by the court. Uh, the, the sheriff, they would order the, the sheriff sale, and in, anyone could buy it. So the private sector could buy it. And then what I really like about it uh, is that there's a provision in there for, uh, in, in, like mortgages, uh, there's a six-month redemption period. So if a property owner during that six-month redemption period uh, decided they wanted to reverse that, that sale, they could come in and, and redeem their property. And let's say that the that the sale brought an extremely low amount, uh, about four or five thousand dollars, and the property is worth thirty. Uh, the 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 seller of the property could actually hire a real estate agent to sell it uh, for thirty and redeem it uh, and wind up with money in their pocket. So, I, I think there's some solutions basically, and the uh, uh, in, incentive programs are somewhat bothersome to me because. It basically usually inures to the, the uh, an inside group that uh, that has the political power. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, John, you you had mentioned you know a couple of the amendments and the things that are being worked on here with the redemption process, with the due process of finalizing any kind of transfer of the title property. If you implement essentially these types of amendments into this bill, the bill essentially becomes null and void because it's it's this bill essentially expands the power for them to be able to do that stuff without a redemption process without due process of being able to collect those titles. Uh, so if we inject that stuff in there, <laughs> then it pretty much counters whatever the bill is essentially doing, which is a good thing. Well, it what uh, bringing this, uh, this type of uh, sale into the mix uh, actually does create due process of law through the district court. Mm-hmm. And so instead of a city council voting on this and, and, a, and a board of code and building standards, uh, we have a district court that's this involved, and, and uh, hopefully they'll follow the Constitution and be uh, adept at uh, making sure private property rights are, are handled. Exactly. So, but what I like about it, uh, it becomes a public sale, and now we have market rather than a taking with no compensation at all. My problem is that uh, uh, can you imagine in the United States of America we, we, we've got a system here where cities have, like Wichita have consistently come in and and, and seized dozens and dozens of property, bulldozing to pay people zero. Absolutely zero. Nothing. Zero. That, that is that's, wrong. That's the and concerning the, and the part of it. the government recognized that, and, and if they don't work with us on some sort of a meaningful compromise that protects property rights for people, I'm hopeful he'll veto it again. John Todd, it's a pleasure, my friend. Thank you for bringing it to light. We're going to touch on this as it progresses. I appreciate you coming in and talking to us a little bit about it. We're going to have to do that again. Coming up after the bottom of the hour here, Governor Sam Brownback joins us as well. This is The Voice of Reason on KQM on a Thursday. We'll be right back.